Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. Pathfinder is the most created archer class for Maplers level 255 and above. So why are there so many Pathfinders? And just how many paths did they find? That's what we intend to uncover today in why everyone plays Pathfinder. Pathfinder's journey throughout MapleStory hasn't always been easy. The class was a very powerful and a very lazy grinder when it was first released. With grinding being the main way to get messes around the time of their release, it was the perfect class to just grind and chill on. This resulted in the class being quite popular when it was first released and also explains why there are so many Pathfinders compared to other classes that were released later like Kane and Lara which never had this flying start. Or maybe it's because all the NPCs in the Pathfinder starter area are named after cheese and everyone just kind of liked that. Pathfinder has suffered though from a lot of nerfs over the years that she was released though. Up to the point where it became a bit of a meme but in a recent year she has slowly been getting a few more buffs here and there and even some much needed quality of life changes. So about the class itself, Pathfinder has a relic gauge that can be filled up with energy by hitting monsters with your skills. And some skills will cost energy. You fill up your gauge pretty quickly and there's even a hyper skill that fills it up instantly. Each time you fill up half your gauge you'll gain a buff that increases your final damage and heals you for 8% of your HP and MP. Pathfinders have three different skill types, Cardinal Deluge, Cardinal Torrent and Cardinal Forge. Depending on which skill type you're using, the emblem in your gauge will change. This affects how some skills perform. For example, when I use a Torrent skill, you can walk when using your Ancient Astra skill. If you have a Deluge emblem active, you can no longer walk but deal more damage and fire off additional magical arrows. When using Force type skills, you can guide the Ancient Astra's attacks and they deal a lot of damage. It's like Xenon but with a step more. A recent quality of life change did make it easier for Pathfinders to fix to which emblem they are using. Using the new Curse and Shant 4 skill, Pathfinder can choose and fix one emblem in their gauge, never switching until they turn the skill off again or if they switch it to something else, making it a lot easier and manageable to get the emblem that you want. Pathfinder skills also have cooldowns, of course they do, but each time your emblem switches by using different attacks, these cooldowns get lowered by half a second, allowing you to go through your cooldowns really fast if you just keep attacking. Pathfinders grind with two skills that they put together in a macro for easier grinding. This is a must if you're leveling up a Pathfinder. Also quick tip, you can right click your double jump so you can either jump by double tapping up or by pressing up and jump like the other explorers. So you can use whichever you prefer. And you can also go down faster by pressing jump and the down key or by tapping down twice depending on your configuration. There is a more to Pathfinder but let's get into some freaking action. Your grinding is super simple. Pathfinders really like small maps where they can stand still and look left and right while firing away. Not the most exciting gameplay but it's very easy and very lazy. In bigger maps, it's the good old jump around and attack strat that gets the job done. You can use some of your cooldown skills to clear monsters that are a bit harder to reach. And you can use your place down 5th job turrets to help out with mobbing. The torrent turrets are especially useful when mobbing. One of your common 5th job skills, Fury of the Wild, gives a nice upgrade to your good old Birdo. So this one can help out a bit more when grinding and of course when pulsing. And in true archer fashion, you can summon a tornado that moves around the map. If your Fury of the Wild skill is active, the tornado will be stronger as well, which is pretty neat. Grinding is super easy on this class. Your two mobbing attacks are pretty powerful and don't need a lot to get going. And if you have to move around, you can even use your dash to get around quickly. Bossing wise, there are a few more mechanics that you need to keep in mind. Some of your attacks will leave a stackable debuff on the enemy. You can get up to five stacks and each stack will increase your critical damage against the affected monster by 4%, so up to 20% more critical damage which is pretty good. So Pathfinders first have to debuff the boss by attacking it a couple of times before they can really unload and then refresh the debuff every 30 seconds which you're kind of doing already anyway so no worries about that. But you have no bind so you need to sacrifice a node slot for the common bind skill and their burst is a bit lackluster and hard to pull off especially against some of the more mobile bosses like Damien and Lucid. For example, your Tempest Tornado is kinda slow, so if the boss moves around quickly or even teleports away, there is a bit of downtime while the skill travels to the boss and then starts hitting again. And your 5th job turrets are stationary, so if the boss moves out of range, you'll lose out on damage. 
Their Nova Blast does more damage when the Relic Gauge is full, but this skill is also your only invincibility frame. So if you find yourself in a trick situation where you have to use it, that's also not ideal. Pathfinders do have another fixed up skill that gives a shield that reduces incoming damage by 40%, which is definitely helpful. But this skill does have a 120 second cooldown and only lasts for a few seconds. So your spacing and awareness around the boss fight is pretty important on this class. Pathfinders damage is not bad by any means, but its bossing can feel a little bit clunky compared to some of the other classes. It ain't a weak class though, but it definitely excels more at grinding than at bossing. And it's this chill and strong mobbing that made the class so popular in the first place. Note-wise, there are quite a few skills that Pathfinder wants to boost, so you'll need 6 nodes to max out all your attacks, making it a bit less optimal for a bossing mule you really use all your skills, or at least most of them. Of course, some of them are more important than others, but in the end, you'll need 6 nodes. And if you like to look for the way yourself, definitely give this class a spin, it is popular for a reason. And also, real quick before I sign off, I found this web shop called Nebulite Studio that sells handmade Maple Story clay figures. Check them out if you're looking to add something to your collection. There is a link to the store in the video description. And that's all I had on the Pathfinder. What do you think of this class? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels de Konik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Claudie Mora, Wiley, Riser Aryu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Safronix, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Sir Tito655, Michael Manchaka, Raytheus, Afterlord, Betrayal1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tide One Pun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Ben on Games, The Passenger, Kani Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukao 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Eck, Feco, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matinu Death, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Fazil, Spots D. Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandao, Snufflepop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Drake, Gaber Wolf, Previc Bang, Best Guild Luna, Casual Valk, Quinn, Migu, and Mark Sette. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.